Hi everyone, um, today I thought I will uh, make a video on uh, some essential ship knowledge that uh, all mariners should be in possession of themselves uh, because I find that I have been making videos on advanced topics and I hear back from some of the subscribers asking me questions or queries regarding some of the basic terms that I assume that you guys are very familiar with. So I thought uh, I will make this video today to make you familiar with uh, some of the principal dimensions of a ship uh, and uh, make sure that you thoroughly understand uh, how they are measured or what they stand for. Now you may be familiar with some of these terms or maybe all of these terms. So make sure that you watch the entire video uh, and uh, ensure that you have a thorough understanding of all the terms. If you do have it, then that's good. But if you don't, then this video will be very beneficial for you before you watch any of the videos on advanced ship knowledge. So I'll start off by what you see on your screen uh, is the side of a ship. This is the starboard side of a ship, of course. And today I'll be talking about various terms that constitute the principal dimensions of a ship. I'll start off by the plimsoll mark and what it is all about. So what you see on your screen right now is the plimsoll mark, of course. Now the plimsoll mark is the circular shape uh, with a dashed line across it, not a dashed line, but a straight line or a horizontal line across it and the letters G and L written uh, on its side. So G, L is an example of a classification society. In this case, it stands for Germanisha Lloyd. Sometimes you may have other letters written on it, such as NK, which stands for Nippon Kaiji Kaiokai or LR which stands for Lloyd Register or even IR which stands for Indian Register. Now what you see here is of course the plimsoll mark and the plimsoll mark or the freeboard mark as it is sometimes known is a symbol indicating the maximal immersion of the ship in the water leaving a minimal freeboard for safety. All right, so freeboard is of course the distance from the water line to the deck line and I'll talk about that as well as we go along. So this mark consists of a circle with a diameter of about one foot through which a horizontal line is drawn with its upper edge going through the center of the circle. This level indicates the minimum freeboard in salt water summer conditions. As you can see the upper line of the plimsoll or the horizontal line of the plimsoll mark coincides with the summer load line which is right on its right side. Now beside the circle is the load line marks consisting of a number of horizontal lines indicating the minimum freeboard from a tropical or fresh water or tropical fresh or summer winter or winter North Atlantic. All the load lines are connected by a vertical line as you see on the screen. The ship may load cargo till the upper edge of the relevant load line at the appropriate water level. So if you are in a geographic region which is classified as the winter load line, you may load your ship up to the mark designating the winter load line up to the upper level of the winter load line or similarly the summer or tropical. The whole world and you will have a load line chart for this. A whole world is divided into the load line or the tropical zones or the load line zones rather not the tropical zone the load line zone and normally the load line chart is provided in the ship's office right next to the chief officer's lodicator because the chief officer has to know uh, which in which waters is the ship berthed in so that he or she can plan the loading accordingly. So if you are in summer waters, the vessel may be loaded up to the summer load line or if you are in tropical waters, it may be loaded up to the tropical load line. But if you are going from tropical load line to summer load line, then you have to make sure that when wherever the vessel may be loaded up to the tropical load line, when the vessel reaches the summer waters, the vessel should be submerged up to its summer load line. All right, so it cannot be loaded beyond the load line for which the ship is designated for. The freeboard is marked according to the result of the freeboard calculation, where the summer freeboard in salt water is established. The main parameters in that calculation are the length of the vessel, the width or the beam of the vessel, the shear of the vessel or the length of the superstructures, length to depth ratio, etc. Alliances are made for fresh water, of course. The minimal freeboard depends on the location on earth, that is the latitude and also the time of the year, whether it is summer, winter, autumn, spring. 
The plimsoll mark is basically to be checked by the crew. The origin lies in the safety of the people on board. The abbreviations of the marked load lines have to be in the language of the flag state of the vessel. For easy checking of the position of the mark during the yearly load line survey, above the mark a reference line is drawn called the deck line. You can see the deck line in the picture as well. Normally at the level of the weather deck, but in case the weather deck is not the freeboard deck, which is the case in some of the Roro passenger ships, then the deck line is drawn at the level of the deck. When the distance between the deck line and the plimsoll mark is impractically large or the connection deck shell plate is rounded off like in tankers or bulk carriers, the reference line is positioned at a lower level. The plimsoll mark and the deck line are to be marked permanently on both the port and the starboard side at the mid length of the ship. When a ship carries a deck cargo of timber, for example, and certain demands are met, this ship is allowed to have more draft but lesser freeboard and that is why you have separate timber load lines. This in connection with the additional reserve buoyancy provided by the deck cargo for the timber ships. Now to indicate this, the ship has special freeboard marks for carrying a deck cargo of timber and it is called the timber mark. So therefore for timber ships, these load lines are designated in a different manner. Tankers carrying liquid cargoes and being completely watertight also have allowance for lesser freeboard compared with other cargo ships of the same length. So here you can see how the load lines look like in actuality. And I have shown you here some of the uh, marks. The number one on your drawing is the, of course, uh, number three is the plimsoll line, uh, the horizontal line. And the number one, although it's a bit misplaced, but I wanted to indicate the plimsoll mark here, of course, the circular shape and the plimsoll mark. Uh, number two that you see are the timber marks. This is how the timber load lines are designated on the ship. Because we were talking about the timber ships, I thought I'll show it to you. Then you have the draft marks at number four. Uh, this is how you read out the draft. And number five that you see on top of the screen is the deck line and how the deck line is drawn. So you can see here in timber ships, the deck line is drawn a bit lower because it allows for reduced freeboard. Uh, and uh, that is how timber ships are, but not for other cargo ships. All right, so the load line is the water line of a ship lying in the water. There are different load lines for different situations, such as uh, light water line is the water line of a ship carrying only her regular inventory, and D water line is the water line of maximum load draft in seawater. The water line is used as a limit to which the various structural components are designed. Then you can see here is the uh, some of the, uh, the 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 register the plimsoll mark is designated by the classification society or the register of the ship. Here again it is NK, which stands for like I told you Nippon Kaiji Kaiokai. Uh, this is a Japanese register. Uh, you can again see the draft marks as number four, and the more one is the normal or regular load lines this is not for the timber ship this is for a general cargo ship or general cargo ships all right so this is how it is designated as on normal ships this is how it actually looks like if you have never sailed on ships before then we have the summer freeboard summer freeboard is the vertical distance from the summer load line which also coincides with the horizontal line of the plimsoll mark so it is the height from the upper level of the plimsoll mark or the upper level of the summer load line up to the deck line. So this is what you have to be very familiar with. And summer draft is the vertical distance between the upper line of the summer load line or the upper line of the horizontal plimsoll mark till the water level. All right, so of course that will differ as per the water level, but that is the summer draft. So make sure that you are becoming familiar with these terms because I have found uh, a lot of students asking me questions about these terms and I realized that uh, maybe I assumed that you are very familiar with these marks, but you may not be so. So I thought I'll show you all these in pictures so that you get a good understanding. So let's keep going. In the next picture here, what you see is uh, some of the basic terms again, which we assume that you are familiar with, but you may not be. So number one here is the length overall of the ship. That is how the length overall of the ship is measured. So the length overall is the horizontal distance over the extremities of the ship, right from the stem all the way to the stern of the vessel. All right. 
Number two is the length between the forward and aft perpendiculars. So the length between the perpendiculars, also called LBP, and I use this term a lot in my stability videos. So the length between perpendiculars is the distance between the forward and the aft perpendicular, which you see in the picture. So length between perpendiculars is length from the aft perpendicular, which is normally the center of the rudder stock, to the forward perpendicular. All right. So imaginary lines perpendicular to the baseline or plane are called the perpendiculars. All right. So the lines are imaginary and they are perpendicular to the baseline or plane or the water line on a ship. There are forward perpendiculars. This line crosses the intersection of the water line and the front of the stem. And then you have the aft perpendicular, which is the line which usually aligns with the center line of the rudder stock. The center line of the rudder stock is like an imaginary line around the which the rudder rotates. The perpendiculars are used when the line's plan is made. They are the ends of the block where the underwater part of the hull fits. So this is how you have to know the difference between length overall and length between perpendiculars. I'll keep going. Number three is the length on the water line. So the horizontal distance between the points where the bow and stern are going through the water plane at summer mark, less the shell plating that is the molded that is called the length on the water line and see how it is marked on the picture. All right. Then we have number six, which is the draft of the ship. Now the draft could be draft forward, draft aft, draft midship. Here, of course, it is showing the midship draft. If the vessel is on even keel, then of course, uh, the drafts forward and aft are the same. But the draft forward, for example, is the vertical distance between the water line and the underside of the keel as measured at the forward perpendicular. Similarly, draft at the stern would be the vertical distance between the water line and the underside of the keel as measured at the aft perpendicular. Now, depending on the loading condition, most of the times the forward and the aft drafts differ. It's very rare that you have the same forward and aft drafts. It can happen, of course, but uh, most of the times in loading conditions, we have a forward and an aft draft which are different from each other. Most of the times vessel prefers or the master prefers to have a stern trim. That means the aft draft is more than the forward draft to ensure that the propellers are always immersed. The trim then becomes the difference between the draft at the stem and the draft at the stern. So we say it's down and trimmed by the head when the vessel and the draft forward is larger at the forward vessel. The forward trim is larger. We call it down by the head or trimmed by the head. And when the aft draft is larger than the forward draft, then we say it's down and trimmed by the stern. On an even keel in proper trim, the draft of the stern equals the draft of the stem. Then number eight, what you see is known as the air draft. Now, what is the air draft? The air draft is the vertical distance between the water line and the highest point of the ship. The air draft is measured from the summer mark. If the ship has less draft, one can ballast until it reaches the summer draft and so obtain its minimum air draft. All right, I'll keep going, but uh, I hope you understood the terms it length overall length between perpendiculars, what is the load line length, uh, the, and then I'll show you some other terms as well so that you become familiar with them. Now what you see here is sometimes confuses students as well. So what you see here as number five is the depth of the vessel. Now the depth of the vessel is the vertical distance between the baseline and the upper continuous deck. The depth is measured at half of the length between perpendiculars at the side of the ship. Number four is the breadth overall. So the breadth overall is the maximum breadth of the ship as measured from the outer hull on the starboard side to the outer hull on the port side. And it includes the rubbing bars, the permanent fenders, etc. Number six we have is the draft. You know the draft already, so I will not take you through the draft. Number seven is the freeboard. So the freeboard, as I've told you before, is the distance between the water line at the top of the deck at the side. The term summer freeboard means the distance from the top of the summer road line or the plimsoll mark and the upper edge of the deck line. All right, that is the freeboard. 
So I hope that you have become familiar with all the essential dimensions of the ship. These are some of the things you have to be very familiar with. Now molded dimensions are often mentioned. Now molded dimensions are the distance between two points measured at inside of shell plating or outside framing. All right. Deck line, remember again, is the extended line from the upper side of the freeboard deck or deck covering at the ship's side. So make sure that you are very really familiar with all these terms because I have been using these terms and I have been assuming that you guys are very familiar with. But I, however, I have got a few questions and it may be from students who are uh, not so experienced and it's a good idea for you to become familiar with these terms before you start watching advanced videos on ship stability or any other. I'll continue to, continue to make videos on this topic because I know that some of the students don't understand the meaning of a shear or camber or a rise of floor, even the difference between gross tonnage and net tonnage. Now I have made videos on gross tonnage and net tonnage, what they are, what, how do you calculate it? But I want to show you some pictures now. So the more pictures I show you, the cl more clarity you get about each of these topics. So it helps you to visualize, especially during uh, calculations in stability, because you cannot understand stability if you cannot visualize all these terms. So I'll, I'll take you through all that. I'll try to show you as many pictures as I can. Uh, so that you get a good understanding of this topic. So let me know what you thought about this video, whether it was useful or whether it was completely useless <laughs> and I wasted your time, but I look forward to your feedback and comments. Bye for now guys.